I gotta tell you a quick Chick-fil-A story. It's really not a Chick-fil-A story, but, but Jackie makes the world. You like deviled eggs, right? Love them. Of course you do, because you're a man. Yeah. I've never met a man that doesn't like deviled eggs. Yeah, love them. Jackie has this secret ingredient she puts in her deviled eggs. Paprika? Oh no, she can't do that because she's allergic to paprika. Okay. It will have to go straight to Parkland. Okay. But uh, she uh, puts Chick-fil-A sauce in there. Oh. And it's it's my friend Matt Pittman, okay, Mr. She, Mr. She, Mr. Meat Church. He he's okay. like, what's the secret? Degree? I won't tell him. Really? He do, he doesn't watch the five o'clock. He watches the six o'clock. All right, o'clock, well, so you have to ask. I'm gonna text yeah. Jackie to see if she can text me. Oh, that, it's that, that really recipe. really. I mean, a little Chick Fil A sauce. Yeah. And I didn't know you. Could, I thought she was like taking it from the stores. You can buy it at the grocery store. Chick Fil A sauce. Oh, I, I just asked for extra. <laughs> <laughs> we hoard them. We have a whole drawer full of them. There you home. go. There you go. All right. There's my Chick Fil A story. Let me show you this. Did you see this, Chris, back in May? This was, this was here in North Texas. I the, can't remember what I saw this morning. <laughs> it was the Aurora Borealis. And I'm show, I want to show you a couple pictures just to remind you how pretty it looked. I didn't see it. I went out you know, when I got home late at night after the late news, and I looked, and I couldn't find it, or I couldn't see anything. But so many of you did, and it was so cool to see it. It happens occasionally in Texas. This is up in Whitesboro. My thanks to Jennifer Horowitz for sending these pictures to us. But, but it's on the rise. The Aurora Borealis activity is on the rise. So, you know, when you think of the Aurora, you think of the northern lights, it's all about the solar storms. And they're caused by solar flares or, and coronal mass ejections that, that often originate from sunspots. And when that takes place, these sunspots when we have increased solar activity, which we're in right now, that began in 2019, it peaks in 2025, we get more activity. Now, typically, the auroras are in unusual places. So, so they're, you can usually see them, you get up by the poles, the North Pole, the South Pole, but occasionally when we have these really strong storms, it can push them to the lower latitudes, like down here in the state of Texas and in North Texas. So the Northern Lights, they're really hard to predict, especially in the intensity and the, vis the visibility in North Texas. But I want you to know, we've got a couple more, about a year and a half or so of increased activity. We'll do our, our darn best to let you know when you have the opportunity to go outside and check it out like we did back in May. So just know, increased activity, that's good news. 99 in Dallas right now, it's 100 to 2 in Fort Worth. You throw in the humidity, almost everyone here in this part of Texas and then west is, uh, is in the triple digits. Northeast Texas still in the 90s, lower humidity, slightly cooler temps. Right now at DBU, it's 103. It feels like 113. It's hot. The high today was 101. The morning low was 79, but with the humidity pretty low, it felt really comfortable outside early this morning. The normal highs uh, and lows, they continue to go down, even though our temperatures at this moment aren't. 95 and 75 are the normals. We've been as hot as 105 on this date back in 1980. Outside right now, 99 with an east wind, a breeze uh, out of the east at 13. Pollen, we have elm, pigweed, and grass. All three are moderate. Fungus today, that's low. There we are. Other than a couple spotty showers, and a few little spotty showers uh, out here across parts of the, the big country in the Concho Valley. We have a few little spotty showers and thunderstorms. They're all the activity. This is the monsoonal moisture. I mean, the southern, the central, up into parts of the northern Rockies, the northern plains, and also across parts of the, the, the Midwest, the upper Midwest. That's where thunderstorms are. Down here in the state of Texas, high pressure's in control. That suppresses any thunderstorm activity and any widespread rain. That dominates our weather the next few days. And as it does, uh, it's going to keep us hot, but at least the uh, ridge of high pressure, that big heat dome starts to weaken, and that will allow temperatures to start to trend lower, cooler. That's good news. 80, dry, warm, light winds tonight during the day. Tomorrow, another hot one. We'll go triple digits again tomorrow. Uh, a hot day, a humid day, a breezy day with lots of sunshine. There's the next 14 days. Look at the first seven. See the temperature trend there? By the middle of next week, middle 90s, Thursday, 96, a couple little pop-up thunderstorms those days. And then as we head into the Labor Day weekend, this weekend's going to be dry and hot. Labor Day weekend is almost always dry and hot. Maybe a, a shower or thunderstorm popping up. The rain will not be widespread, but I do have a little bit of rain in the forecast. But temperatures are definitely trending the right direction. By the end of that 14-day forecast, we have temperatures that are going to be uh, solidly in the middle 90s, so there you go. That's what we have. I gotta hey, see. Hey, hey, look at get the, out of here. Look at the hey, food, hey. Dia. Look at the food. <laughs> what kind of toss was that? Get out of here. <laughs>